everyone, welcome back to the Fabrication Shop. In this episode, we're going to start our review of the code that we're going to use with the electronic payload on the Olympus project. So we are going to start with an overview of the software. One of the things that we will be able to do is we will be able to reuse most of the code from the original APAM project. The APAM being the Arduino Primary Avionics Module. This was the module that we created for the Project Icarus rocket. The APAM is good, it'll provide us a good foundation, and then we can build on that to create the new software. We're also going to need to create new routines. We're going to be adding a couple new sensors, as we talked about in the last video. We're going to have an altimeter created through a barometric pressure sensor. We're also going to have an IMU, which is going to help us to get the uh, g-forces experienced by the rocket as well as the roll rate. And then the last thing that we're going to need to do is we're going to need to create some test routines for checking these sensors to make sure that they're functioning. Now the test routines we'll be using when we're going through the build process or when the rocket is on the ground because we'll be connected by a, by a USB cable back to the laptop. So the test routines won't be actively used during flight. Now before we get into the actual code review itself, we want to talk a little bit about documenting our code. We want to write our code so that it makes sense. If we're looking at this code six months from now, a year from now, does it make sense with what we're doing? Okay, or what we're trying to do? Most of this, if you come back and look at your code a year from now, you will have forgotten most of what you did during that time period. Now there are things that we can do that help us document the code. One of the biggest ones is using comments. We use comments to help explain what our code is doing. We use comments to explain what variables are or what certain functions are trying to accomplish. With the Arduino, we can use it to show where certain pins are being used on the, uh, the main microcontroller uh, board. So comments are huge. They are necessary. The other nice thing is since the code we're using is compiled, comments don't take up any space in the compile code. They're ignored by the compiler. So we can write as many comments as we want. And those will come back and be very helpful later on, either when we're trying to expand our project or we're trying to come back and troubleshoot something that came up long after we did the initial coding. Another thing that we can do that will help document our code is we can make our variable names descriptive. And so what I mean by that is we can use a variable name such as current temp as opposed to X or CT. Again, the compiler doesn't care. It's all ones and zeros to it. But for us, six months, a year down the road, a variable such as current temp is much more descriptive and much more helpful than the variable X. Try to use descriptive names as much as you can when creating variables. The last thing that we want to use that's going to help us down the road is using a template. Templates help provide consistency from project to project. And where this will help you out down the road is when you're looking for something, if you've done your projects consistently from project to project, it will give you a better idea of where to look for things. If you know that you do things in a certain order for every project, and now you're going back and let's say you're looking for a particular variable and where that is going to be first declared at, if you use the same process every time, then you can go pretty much right back to where you know your variables are being declared in every project. So using templates can help provide consistency and consistency 
helps make it easier to document your code. It helps make it easier to troubleshoot code. Uh, helps make it easier to read code. And this is especially true long after you've gotten through the first 1.0 package release. So now we want to go ahead and start doing the actual code review itself. As we start our code review, if you've looked at any of our previous Arduino projects, you will see that we do use a template from project to project and you're going to see things in similar places, similar types of layouts. When we start a project, we always have what we call a title block and that's what you see on the screen here in front of you now. This title block is going to include the name of the project, in this case the Olympus Avionics package, what the version number is, and this changes as we go along, as we make changes and updates, those numbers change. We offer a brief description of what the project is actually trying to accomplish. In this case, we indicate that the project is going to use the APAM as our baseline avionics package. It's going to include two sensors. We also give a little bit of information here that uh, all code listed is serial, which is going to be going to the serial monitor, is for testing. So this is the kind of information we would put in our description. Finally, we put down the date that this project was created. This is the day we started it. Then we have the date that it's updated. My name is in here as the author. While we do copyright our project here, we do release it under the open source license GPL3 or general public license 3. The next thing we have is code examples. Now here we'll list any code that we used or that we modified that we got from someplace else. So you can see here the SD FAT SD card code, the Arduino altimeter code, the BMP 180 pressure sensor code, plus these others. We also include a link to where we found that code. And this does a couple things. One, it does help recognize the folks who have uploaded and donated their code or released it under an open source license. And this allows me and you to learn from what they have done. The other thing is, by including the link, it allows me to go back and look at the original code if I run into issues reviewing what was done originally and what I did. Sometimes it shows up real quick where I messed up at and explains why the code isn't doing what I expect it to do. So this next section provides a list of components that we use and their pin assignments. It's also important that you include the name of the board. In this case, it's a nano board. Different pins do different things on different boards. You can see we've got the RGB LED lamp pins, our micro SD card pins, the BMP 180 pressure sensor pins, and the MPU 650 IMU pins. Continuing on down, we get to our libraries. Now libraries are simply pieces of code that make it easier for us to write our programs. There are literally thousands of Arduino libraries available. In this section here, we'll include any library that we're going to be using in the software. You have to include the libraries here in the very beginning. We also identify what the libraries are being used for. Sometimes it's just a single library like the wire at dot H, which is for the I squared C communications. Sometimes we need two or three libraries for a particular thing we're doing, such as here with the micro SD card reader. The next section down is the declaration section. This section is going to list all the global variables that we use in the program. Now global variables are used by multiple functions within the program. So these variables that you see here, you will see in multiple places within the program itself. There are other variables that are called local variables, 
which are only used within a specific function. Okay, they're not used outside of that function. We have quite a few of our uh, global variables here, or our declarations here. Uh, we have them for the micro SD card, for creating our timestamp, our LGB LED status lamp, our BMP 180. And again, you see we do the same type of thing where we identify particular sections and what things are used for. I want to make a couple notes here to make you aware of concerning the micro SD card and the APAM. If you looked at our Project Icarus code, you will notice that the APAM in that case used the SD library and that's the more common one that's used for writing data and reading data from a micro SD card. One of the problems we had with the SD library was that it did use a lot of memory. So we started looking around and we found the SD FAT library not as memory intensive. The reason we used the SD FAT library as opposed to the SD library was simply to open up a little bit more memory to allow us to get everything to run on the basic nano board. That completes this episode. In our next episode, we'll look at the setup function, how it works, what it does in the Arduino, and how we've set ours up. So until next time, wishing you all the best and take care.